Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. I feel like the word like affordable, cheap, budget, expensive, luxury, is kind of subjective. Like a lot of people might be able to afford like a 40 pound moisturizer, some people might be able to afford it but find it expensive still, because it is. And today I wanted to review some products that I've talked about before, but I've kind of held off on because I found them a little bit expensive for what they are. Um, and I wasn't actually going to make this video because I feel like it's a bit tone deaf at the moment where people are trying to save money. People aren't getting their monthly paychecks like we used to be. But then I thought, I bought all this before any of this happened. And what's better than seeing someone, spoiler, not enjoy all the expensive products they just bought? To really show you what a waste of money a lot of these expensive luxury skincare products can actually be. So yeah, I just thought I'd incorporate these products into my skincare routine this morning. Do I want to? Not really. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you these products and a little review. It's been a few months since I've tried some of these. So yeah, I'm going to give you my skincare enthusiast consumer level review. Um, I've not done a lot of research on these, so we're kind of going to talk as we go. But let's start off with the first product. I have toned. I have essences did essence did. I've used an essence. And I'm gonna start off with a product that's like not too expensive, but I do think it's a little bit pricey for what it is. And that is the Milk Makeup Cooling Water. At first I was like, oh, is this like an eye cream? Like you just apply it under the eyes. But I saw on the website that you apply it. You can apply it everywhere. It's just like a cooling stick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this on a few patches on my face. Um, not under the eyes, because I have an eye product coming for you. But it's just like a few patches where I feel like my face always gets really warm. And actually a few dry patches as well. Um, and I'll explain why. So this contains caffeine and it's kind of like marketed as um, helping reduce puffiness and dark circles. There's no real research between um, behind caffeine actually being able to do that in the long run. Temporarily, yes, it can help. Not in my experience, however. This does have a really nice cooling effect to it. Um, is it something like everyone definitely needs? Not particularly, no. Um, I think in summer, this is gonna be so nice just to like roll over my face occasionally. Um, and I have had this next to my laptop when my eyes have been getting like tired and I've been overworking and overworking. You can never overwork when you're freelance. So it's been nice and soothing. Is it worth 20 quid? If you have the money to get like a nice little extra skincare product, yeah, maybe. Um, not as expensive as the rest of the skincare we're about to try. I just wanted to throw that in there. So the first real expensive luxury product I want to introduce you to is the Chanel Le Lift. This is um, an anti-wrinkle firming eye roll-on and eye patches. These eye patches set me back about 105 pounds. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Let's be honest. What, like... I, so this comes in two parts. You have like a roll on kind of like under eye cream and then you have the patches. You get quite a few of these in the box to be fair. But I first saw this on a Harper's Bazaar go to bed with me video. I can't remember who it was. It might be one of the Hadid sisters who was using this. No, it wasn't. Can't remember. But then I've seen this going around social media quite a bit and I really do think it's like the epitome of what luxury skincare and clothing has become is literally just flashing a tag and a label despite whether the product is actually any good. Well, I feel like brands like Chanel, I'm going on a bit of a fashion rant now, but I feel, I feel like brands like Chanel, Burberry, you used to be able to buy your staples from them, you know? Um, like the Burberry trench coat, a staple, and it would have been the highest quality and you would have it for years and you could pass it down to generations. Whereas I now feel fashion is very trendy led so you don't quite get um the quality that you used to and even if you do it's a trend it's gonna last what a couple years okay so i'm just putting this on like i have the money to buy another one in a month's time so i'm just gonna read from the website um it says that these patches and roll on gives you immediate revitalization and radiance it's not happened yet they go on to say that chanel research has isolated a remarkably potent extract of the Idulis Morning Glory created the signature Le Lift ingredient 3.5 DA. It, it sounds like a lot of fake science to me, you know? <laughs> the eye contour appears instantly smoother and more radiant. Mm. Fine lines are visibly softened. Signs of fatigue look diminished. I can't speak for the fine lines because I don't have any. <laughs> Darkness 
not really either. So, so you get the little patches here. They look cool. They've got the word Chanel written on them, which I guess is half the reason people want to buy them. And it covers, I guess, your areas of concern when it comes to um, eye wrinkles, fine lines, the darkness, all that kind of stuff. They just, the problem I had with these, look, is they just don't stick in that corner. They just don't stick. They're very, very cooling. Um, they literally feel like the milk makeup ones I showed on my channel like not that long ago. Um, as far as cooling sensation goes, um, texture, everything, they don't feel like anything special. I have to be really, really honest. I'm looking at the ingredients and we have some basic humectants in the um, eye roll on. Um, nothing that you wouldn't see in a, a moisturizer or a normal eye cream. You've got um, rye seed extract, um, which is actually known for its ability to like firm up your skin. A few plant-based anti-aging ingredients and antioxidants like, what's this one? Batatus root extract, <laughs> Saccharomyces something extract mushroom extract and a gar, which is algae, I believe. I mean, they all seem nice. There's a lot of fancy extracts and wordings in there that like seem nice, but for a hundred pounds worth of nice, I don't think so. I, I literally think you're just paying for a logo. So I'm down to like a few, I've got like two more of these left. And obviously the eye roll on is gonna last longer than the patches um, as far as usage. I've been using it for a month and I've not really, Nothing really happened, you know? I don't know, but you know, it's what you expect from Chanel. People who buy Chanel can afford shit like this. Like it's it's fun, I guess. I don't know, I'm gonna leave this on for a minute. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. So yeah, whilst I can't really speak for um, the anti-wrinkle side of it, I can speak for the dark circle side of it. And within a month of usage, I've not really come to enjoy these or even think they're worth the money. So we're gonna slip those off. It does feel like a waste. So one thing you may have noticed is this little thing. This is the La Roche-Posay My Skin Track UV Sensor. What this does basically is it tracks how much UVA and UVB um, exposure you're getting throughout the day. And also you can select the sunscreen you're wearing. Obviously, because it's a La Roche-Posay, you can only select um, a La Roche-Posay product from the possible sunscreens. You can kind of create your own, but they don't give you a lot of freedom to set like the UVA, UVB, PA++ kind of stuff, especially as I use a lot of uh, Japanese and Korean sunscreens. It, they don't really, you can't really cut customize it very well depending on your own personal sunscreen. It also gives you humidity um, information, pollen count information, pollution information as well based on your areas. So it does track your location as well. This cost me £54.95 um, from the Apple website. So it's sold on apple.com. This is interesting. It's an interesting product to have. I think it's really interesting if you work from home as well to kind of see um, different rooms in your house, how much UV exposure you're getting sitting by a window um, compared to being outside for long extended periods of time. So this gives you your overall UV exposure. It kind of gives you an allowance of how much UV exposure you can have throughout the day. And obviously the percentage of UV exposure changes on the type of sunscreen you're wearing. Even though I wear sunscreen pretty much all day, every day, I have been experimenting with the app and I pretended I wasn't wearing sunscreen at home, then pretended I wasn't wearing sunscreen outside. And the difference as far as like the UVA, UVB exposure was huge. Like, And it was interesting to see how much UV exposure I was actually getting at home, not wearing sunscreen as well, especially working in like a light room, you can see the daylight coming through here. It's good to kind of, it's good for a couple of days. It's good for you to wear at home and think, right, I need to, this is how often I need to reapply when I'm at home. This is how much exposure I'm getting. It gives you a good idea of how much you should be wearing and when you should reapply. The same for going outside. I think we all basically know if we're going outside, we should be reapplying sunscreen. As like a skincare collector, <laughs> this was amazing to add to my collection. Do I think everyone should rush out and buy one? No, I think it just reminds us of the principle of reapplying sunscreen and just using common sense when it comes to how much you should be wearing and reapplying throughout the day. For someone like me though, I liked it. I just wish, you know, you're, you're paying 54 pounds. You've already paid La Roche-Posay 50 quid. I then don't want to have to shop their sunscreens or, you know, I would like a bit more customization when it comes to the, the app. Is it worth it? Not really. Is it fun if you've got the 50 quid to spare? Yeah, I think so. Um, should everyone rush out and buy it? I don't think so. Okay, the next product we're gonna be using is Fresh Peony Instant Brightening Face Serum. This cost me 58 pounds. 
Mm. You may have seen me review the sugar, like exfoliating scrub that came as a sample when I bought this. <laughs> Ugh. So here we go, 58 pounds. So they describe this as a hydrating face serum that instantly illuminates with light reflecting pearls <laughs> whilst correcting uneven skin tone and texture for brighter skin. I'm already not a fan of this brand, I have to be honest with you. Um, I actually got this a while back, so I have been using this for a couple of months. As far as the texture goes, yes, it's lightweight. It has got the tiniest, the, the tiniest amount of like that pinky tint to it, which you expect with like light reflecting pearls. And like the majority of their products, it's got a very distinct smell to them. A lot of, um, mainly because of their kind of like, their go-to thing is like her um, natural extracts and plant extracts. And of course, artificial fragrance is in here too. It's not an overpowering smell. Is it a smell that I want lingering on my face? Not really, no. This does make the face very soft and it does look supple and it does look hydrated. Look, hydr look hydrated. So in here, if we're looking at the ingredients, we have licorice extract, which is actually nice for brightening and evening out the skin tone. I've got a few products that um, have licorice in and tend to be some of my favorite products. Ascorbyl glucoside, which um, I'm enjoying it in my inculus vitamin C, actually. It's a stable form of vitamin C um, that breaks down into ascorbic acid on the skin. You don't get quite the percentage that they say. So for example, the vitamin C, 15% uh, vitamin C and EGF, you're probably not gonna get 15% vitamin C. It's gonna break down a little bit, but it's fine. Got sodium hyaluronate, you got some other humectants in there as well. Um, your usual occlusive, your usual occlusive that you find pretty much in any kind of hydrating product. Nothing special is what I'm trying to say. But also you got uh, Peonia Suffricosa root extract and Lilia Micandium bulb extract, um, which they claim help um, with tone and comfort of the skin. Both of these ingredients are a little bit like, mm, okay, and I'm not sure how much evidence there really is behind that. My problem with this is, as I said, it feels like it's hydrated the skin. When you touch it, it feels nice and smooth. When I move my face, it's like not tight. I've been using this for a couple of months and my skin doesn't feel any more hydrated than it was without this product, if that makes sense. It's not adding anything to my routine whatsoever. It hasn't brightened my skin more than any other product I use. And on their website, they have this section where it says benefits and proof. Um, their proof is self-assessment on 32 subjects during eight weeks. So again, it's like the, the brand's own claims that the success of their products and the ingredients in there. Yeah, for me, there's just nothing special about this. What I hate the most, uh, is, hate's a strong word. I don't hate it. I dislike it a lot. It does not play well with other products whatsoever. So I will put a moisturizer on after this and throughout the day, it'll start to peel. I will literally be able to roll off clumps of product off my skin throughout the day. Um, it does feel like it's constantly sitting on the skin as well. Like I can feel it like hours after. In my personal opinion, there's nothing in here that warrants it being so expensive. Formulation is everything. I don't mind paying extra money for a really nice formulation. However, I do not like this formulation. You look at some of the reviews as well, and a lot of people are very disappointed in the way it works with their moisturizer and their makeup. In fact, it just doesn't, it feels like a final layer more than anything. It's not something I want to build upon. Fresh for me is a brand now that was a bit kind of like two strikes and you're out. Um, I, ha I have no want or need to try any more of their products. So I got a sample set of products from Tatcha, Tatcha, I never know how to say it, um, because I didn't want to pay full price for their products. Um, after I mentioned in one of the brands I'll probably never review video, that asking basically if I should give us go, it was literally 50-50. Like, people were like, no, don't bother, it's nothing special. Other people were like, it completely transformed my skin. I do sometimes think that that's the placebo effect of having a more expensive product which I fall victim to sometimes if I, because you want to like it, you know, you want to know, believe it's doing something extra special for your skin. Um, I'm trying a few of the other products. I'm not massively impressed, I have to be honest, but um, I wanted to talk specifically about the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. So I actually paid a hundred pounds for um, a set of one, two, three, four products. A hundred pounds for mini, mini products. And the full size version of this is $68 conversion, I'm not sure. Oh, this little travel size one will cost you 20 pounds. Okay, so I'm going to apply this with something I absolutely love. These are the um, Sigma, 
skincare brushes. I absolutely love them. The brush set is £44. This was actually gifted to me, not by Sigma themselves, but as part of like a package. Um, and I love them. They are 100% absolutely unnecessary. No reason to use these whatsoever. But I'm gonna apply my extortionately priced moisturizer with it. So one thing I have to say about the moisturizer is being dewy, I thought it would um, glide across the skin a lot better than what it is. I don't always apply this with a brush. I'm just trying to do like a two in one here. But one thing, it's a lot thicker than I originally thought it was gonna be. I thought it'd be like those hydro boost kind of like watery cream moisturizers, but it's not at all. It's got this thickness to it. Another thing about Tatcha, Tatcha, is they always go on about their botanical ingredients, um, which obviously equals a lot of natural fragrance, and their products are very, very fragrance heavy. So if you don't like fragrance and your skin doesn't enjoy fragrance, more importantly, you're probably not gonna like this product. It's got a few nice um, ingredients in there, like, let's have a look. You got your usual so sodium hyaluronate. They've got gold in there, which come on, we know gold isn't like a thing in skincare. We know people put gold in there just to try and make it like a selling point, like all oh, the luxury of gold on your skin. Like I'm pretty sure there's no effect there on your skin. But you have like floral extracts and um, another floral extract and there's another one there. <laughs> you have rice bran extract, which I actually love, um, especially um, when it comes to like hydrating the skin. I do like how glowy this makes my skin look. Should we zoom? Like it has got like a glow to it. Is it any different to the other moisturizers I love that gives my skin a glowy, dewy look? No, not at all. It's actually like a little bit heavy. Um, it's just a moisturizer that I feel a lot of the um, ingredients are kind of like, you know, um, smoke and mirrors kind of stuff, you know? They just added a load of shit in to make it appear more luxury. I feel like a bit of cultural appropriation going on there as well. I don't know, it's just a brand that I'm not really interested in really after trying a few of their products. And whilst this does feel nice, and I do like the way it makes my skin look, it's not something that I, I feel like I want to buy again or pay the full price version for. Um, one product I'm really liking that gives you the same kind of look because this is what people say is the best thing about this is the glow that it leaves you with after. I've really been enjoying Glow Recipes Banana Souffle Moisturizing Cream, Moisture Cream. I love the glow that it gives me without being as heavy as this feels. Again, it's one of those products that feels like it's just sat on top of my skin. Um, and I've not had a, a, like amazing, um, experience with this over the last month. So I just don't feel like these are products that anybody needs to go and rush out and spend their money on. They are products that are very, very tempting because um, they're everywhere on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I hope looking at me being generally disappointed by these extortionately priced skincare products was fun to watch um, for a good laugh at me. I mean, I think it's important now more than ever to kind of like shop our own stash and use what we got lying around and rediscover old favorites and stuff and just kind of like, you know, let let the people with the money buy these. <laughs> or people like me who can't eat now for a week. But yes, let me know if you love any of these, if you've tried any of these and they're your absolute favorite and you swear by them. Leave that in the comments down below. But that is it from me now, guys. I'll see you next time.